so this powerpoint we are going to talk about the health assessment in the introduction they talking about what are the nursing signs right so they said nursing is is an art of applying the scientific principle in a humanitarian way to care of the people basically the nursing science is the branch of practice medicine the person who have the license they can work in united states and basically when someone is the sick we give them help to continue and to become better but before to do this we have to train ourselves first so the nursing process serve as the organizational framework for the practice of nursing so in this pages i can get a keyword is called the nursing process so the next few minutes we are going to give a focus the nursing process because it is very important every student know what are the step by step process of nursing process but we are going to learn here how to apply the nursing process in our profession and also how to answer the question in nclex board next here um, they said the nursing assessment purposes so is a systemic method by which nurse which nursing plan and provide the care for the patient so the nursing process there are few steps or five steps one is the assessment diagnosis planning implementation and evaluation so the first steps of nursing process is the called assessment right so assessment is a systemic method systemic method means we have to go system by system assessment by which the nursing can plans and provide the care for the patient next here this involve a problem solving approach that enable the nurse to identify the patient problems and potential at the high at risk at high risk and to plan to deliver and evaluate the nursing care in an orally and scientific manner so imagine you are working in a night nice shift in a hospital in emergency department suddenly a patient came and said i have a pain in my left side of the chest so if a patient come in the midnight you are working as a rn and they said i have a pain in the chest in the left side it does not sure is it for cardiac pain is it for complication of peptic ulcer or any other muscular pain so you have to evaluate it you have to go for diagnosis and it is called nursing diagnosis but we have to go a systemic way we have to go a scientific way you have 
ask a, some leading question to evaluate why actually what are the nature of the pain, origin of the pain, radiate of the pain. So on, it is the art of history taking. If you do not have enough anatomical knowledge, physiological knowledge, if you do not coordinate these two knowledge, it would be difficult for you to analyze a patient and make a summary or diagnosis. If you do not do this, how you can make a plan, right? After planning, you can do the critical thinking for implementation. So as, as I told you, when you receive a patient, your first responsibility introduce you who you are. You could tell your name, your designation, your rules, then you could start a good friendship with them. If your patient will not comfortable with you, they will not share anything with you because this is their personal history, very confidential. But when you go in the systemic way, your appearance, your body language, your attitude, Right? When patient develop a confident and you ask very systemic way, leading question asks, then you can evaluate what are the problem of your patient. And it is very, um, it, it does make sense. Patient come to you with a chest pain and if you say, what is your problem? Definitely it is sounding so rude. You can introduce yourself first, make a good friendship, trustable relationship. Then you can ask, how can I help you? Very soft way. It is the, it is the art of history taking. It is the part of our profession. It is our ethics. So they said this, involve a problem solving approach that enable to the nurse to identify the patient problem and potential at the risk. So when patient comes say, I have a chest pain. So you have to identify this chest pain from heart origin or gastric origin, pancreas origin. And also, what are the risks? Maybe if it is the heart origin angina, if you do not take the steps, it lead to MI or congestive heart failure. If the pain is too much and origin for peptic ulcer, if you do not take steps, can cause the perforation and develop peritonitis. If it is complication of the pancreas origin, if you do not take the steps, pain will be continue and patient can go the shock. So you also find out what are the potential at the risk factor related with the present or chief complaint, right? So you are the person in the hospital so then you can decide, oh, my patient has a heart problem, call cardiologist. My patient has a GIT problem, gastric problem, call gastroenterologist, right? My patient has a liver problem, call hepato, um, hep uh, hepatobiliar system or hepatologist, right? So you are the person to evaluate it. You are the person who make a decision who, who will come to check your patient. But everything based on your knowledge. Your knowledge means anatomy and physiology. This anatomy and physiology knowledge 
you can coordinate right next pages here talking the component of nursing process component of nursing process as i told you there are five steps of nursing process the first one is assessment you can see in the picture the second one is diagnosis but this is the nursing diagnosis then step three planning of care then step four implementation and last steps is evaluation so all together is called nursing process but a good nurse can do this because good nurse are able to critical way to thinking for the patient right so in a short i could tell you the nursing process consists of five dynamic and interrelated phases so in that sentence here you can see something my friend it is five steps five dynamic steps and interrelated phases now go for the nclex focus nclex board asks the question which one is the first steps of nursing process the first steps are assessment which one of the second steps of nursing process? This is the nursing diagnosis. Uh, let me show you something, how we can remember. Easy way to remember, it is called add, A, D, add, P, I, E, add, pi right at pi i said so a stand for assessment and d stand for nursing diagnosis and p stand for planning i stand for implementation and e stand for evolution Sometimes NCLEX board asks which of the first steps of nursing process? Definitely assessment. What are the last steps of nursing process? Evolution, right? Sometimes NCLEX board asks what are the next steps after planning? It is implementation or intervention or in clicks would ask what are the steps after implementation it is evolution first of all come assessment so assessment basically in the assessment we check the patient look them ask some question, monitor or examine them, inspect them. After all of this summary, you can go for a diagnosis, which is called nursing diagnosis. So it is not a physician diagnosis. It is not a medical diagnosis. It is our diagnosis. It is a nursing diagnosis because this diagnosis without any laboratory test without lab test it is based on your knowledge your anatomy your physiology your clinical skill and how to critical you thinking how to ask leading question and how to you coordinate with them right so keep it mind for the nplex board assessment is done mainly or primarily by the RN, 
not LPN, not CNA. But I said, the LPN must understand this process because of LPN collect the data. A critical role is assessment also. They can part of it, right? They can collect the data. And this data means sign and symptom of the disease. Okay. So the second one here, diagnosis, means identify the actual or potential health care need or the problem based on the assessment. So like I have a fever, you are my RN. After the history, maybe my fever underlying cause of endocarditis, but you can't say my patient has endocarditis because you do not do any kind of laboratory test yet. But you can say my patient got hospitalized this evening because of fever. This is our diagnosis on our assessment, right? So also we can interpret the data. If you see any, if you see the data is not sure, like pediatric patient, mental health patient, problem patient, you are not sure what patient saying, or you had a question came in your mind, then you go for, find out what is the reality and this call validate the data after organize the data and we could determine if there is a need for any more data collection so in this phase the nurse used the data for formulate and is called nursing diagnosis when you have nursing diagnosis, you make a plan what could do. If I have a bronchial asthma, shortness of breath, you are my RN. You give me the oxygen first. This is intervention. You do not need to call the um, uh, palm, uh, palmatologist or respiratory specialist to give the oxygen. You can give the oxygen. Then you make a phone call to the um, respiratory doctor, right? So this is the planning. When you see my patient has a asthma, shortness of breath, or MI, you call cardiologist, or you call respiratologist. So you make a plan who will come next. So it is your responsibility, I said, and, and call is the call planning. So planning, this is done to provide the client care consistently and appropriately. So if I have a bronchial asthma, if you give them tunnel bar posture, it is not good. You give them semi fallar or high fallar posture. This is appropriate for your patient. And why patient go to you? Nobody want to go to the hospital they go to for comfortness, right? So they want to relieve from the shortness of breath. They want to relieve from the pain. And this is called Maslow's law hierarchy. So we can follow some rules and principles, then give the treatment and go for the planning. So in this phase, we can ask some question, basically. And finally, when doctor come, you and doctor go for make a plan. After planning, you go for implementation or intervention, which is called implementation or intervention, right? So you can begin to do something right you have you start to to do something good for the patient in the implementation in this phase 
you go for pre uh, prepare, you counseling, you teach your patient, you do perform something. After the care, you can go for after care uh, evaluate, and also you can keep the record. And finally, when you give something implementation how you feel, patient feel good or bad it is called evaluation or if the patient need further assessment you can change your planning and also compare the actual outcome with expected outcome or you can reevaluate the problem for right this is a part of evaluation so let me go and let me go in the details here so next here assessment diagnosis planning implementation evaluation These are the first five steps here showing the five steps again what i explained few minutes ago and all of these five steps are called nursing process. Assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So next here, we go one by one steps. Assessment here. The assessment, they said, it is the systemic and continuous process. Systemic and continuous. So in this systemic and continuous process, we can collect the data. We can organizing the data and then validation the data. And finally, documenting the data. So first of all, before to go next level, let me explain something. So I said here, here, it is systemic. What does it mean? When patient came to you with a chest pain, you have to go for cardiovascular system examination. But at least we have a six to seven or eight system in the body. As a healthcare provider, you have to, whatever your patient has a one system get involved, right? So if I have a chest pain, you can check my cardiovascular system but it does not mean that you do not check my respiratory system. It does not mean you do not check my GIT. It does not mean that you do not need to check my nervous system or um, renal system, right? Or kidney or urinary system. So I said, when patient come to you, because of your anatomy, physiological knowledge, your clinical skill, you can easily find out what are the pro system get involved and then go this system first. If I say I have a chest pain, you can check my cardiovascular system first. If your patient said I have a shortness of breath, then you can go to check the respiratory system first. If your patient say, I have a um, chest, I mean, um, gastric problem, full of abdomen, constipation, you can go GIT system first. But which system get involved? You can check that system first, but after finish this system, sooner or later, you can check all of the systems. A brilliant RN always do this. So it is called the systemic approach and also continuous approach. 
in this system we have to collect some sign and symptom it is called data collection so you see collection of the data but when you collect the data you can organize them like i said i have a chest pain what are the next question you can ask definitely next question you will not ask do you have a constipation if i say i have a chest pain the next question you will not ask me do you have a diarrhea if i have a chest pain next question you will not ask do you have a shortness of breath a brilliant rn never do this what should do this if i said i have a chest pain you can ask me can you show me where the pain is can you indicate me by one finger where actually the location of pain then you can ask me can you please show me is it radiate anywhere like shoulder left arm jaw back of my uh, backbone or then you can ask me can you tell me when pain relief or when pain getting worse means relieving factor and worsening factor in effect related with my pain then you can go other sign other problem so it is very um, organized way to approach the other one is validation means like psychiatry patient there's something and you can come a question is it possible right in case of pediatric patient or psychiatric patient or any level of consciousness impaired alcoholic patient if any data if you feel it is not correct or maybe or may not you can go for accurate data find out what is the truth and this call validation of data after all we can keep the record and is call documentation so this documentation save you this documentation save your patient and this documentation do easy access to the next um uh, rn who is replaced in your place so it is very important to keep the record and finally documentation for everything next here the nursing process they said again different way to organized in case of assessment they wrote collecting the data organize the data validate the data and keep the documentation right so here <clears throat> i said <clears throat> <clears throat> this assessment always done by rn but lpn must understand this process because lpn collect the data as well so type of data to be collected in this time they said collect the data organize the data but here i said what are the different type of data to be collected right so first of all history taking is important during the history take we can collect subjective data we can collect objective data and also data collect from the chart or also confirm the data collection which is called validate and communicate the information received in the assessment and finally keep documentation next here they said nursing process continue 
that NAS gathered the information to identify the health status of the patient. Next here, the assessment are made initially and continuously throughout patient care and remaining the phase of the nursing process depends on validity and competence of the initial data collection. The next here, what are the reason to collect the data? What are the purpose? The purpose of data collection to establish our diagnosis or to establish the database. So all information about the client would be included. So like nursing health history, physical examination, and physical, any physician history, the result of laboratory and diagnostic test. So as a RN, when you organize the data in a paper or in a software, in a computer, so it should be included, what are the patient past nursing health history? How many times they came admitted in the hospital, any major disease? Or who is their doctor? And also physical examination, general examination and system by system examination. Also, we can keep record any laboratories or diagnostic test. Keep in mind, you are RN, you are very important in the US health system. So as a RN, you have to know how to find out which is abnormal laboratory test. What are the coordinate collaborating, right? So the normal range is super important for NCLEX board exam. And also it is important to find out which is okay and which is not okay, at least. Because you are the person who can interact with your doctor for the patient. What are the other purpose? Assessment is a part of each activities the nurse does for and with the patient. The purpose is validate a diagnosis to provide basis for effective nursing care to help the effective decision making means analysis or diagnosis. Also, basis for accurate diagnosis to promote the holistic nursing care, to promote effective and innovative nursing care and collect data for nursing research, which we called evidence-based practice. So the, here is the eight purposes and finally they evaluate the nursing care. So you see what are the importance of data collection, right? So not only the diagnosis, not only the planning, not only implementation or evaluate, also improve the quality of service for the future patient. And we can use this data, you can use this outcome implementation after evaluate, then you can apply it for future patient. So this data also we can use for nursing research, which is called evidence-based practice. So next here, Next here, the assessment has a, some parts like initial assessment, focus assessment, time-labbed assessment, and emergency assessment. 
what it is. Let me explain one by one. So initial assessment means the initial assessment, also called admission assessment. Admission assessment is performed when the client enter a healthcare, healthcare system from a healthcare agencies. The purpose are to evaluate the client health status, to identify the functional health pattern that are problematic and to provide in depth comprehensive database which are critical for evaluate the change in the client health status in subsequent assessment. So before to go next level, I can tell you two stories. Like you, you, you have a three patients. You have a three patients, I said. One patient come to you because of uh, road traffic accident. One patient come to you. Another patient came to you like diabetes. Another patient came to you, number three, acute exacerbation of chronic asthma, right? So my friend, there are three patient came to you, right? So these three patient data collection is not same. Why? The patient who came because of diabetic and diabetes is a chronic problem they will not die within a time. So you can see it, you can talk to the patient, you can take the history with time. A patient came who has asthma, asthma is a chronic disease, but I said, patient come, acute exacerbation of chronic asthma. I mean, patient has asthma, but it is acute attack. You give them oxygen first, save the life, then go to take the history. The patient who came the road traffic accident, you do not know how bad it is. Maybe patient do not talk. Patient is tongue is go back to the respiratory tract and asphyxia occur, stoppage of respiration. You will take the history first or you can save the life first. You have to save the life, then take the history. So I said, this is a different way of technique, the history for the patient. Today's subject, we are going to talk health assessment. is the part of our associate nursing program. So here I'm explaining, I'm sharing my ideas how to take a history, this part. But history taking has some parts, initial history, then they said, the here, here we go. You see the part of the history, like, um, Okay, so just now go the other part here. Initial assessment, also called admission assessment, to perform when the client enter healthcare from a healthcare agencies. Purpose are evaluate the client health status to identify the functional health pattern that are problematics and to provide an in-depth comprehensive database, which are critical for evaluating the change in the client health status in subsequent assessment. 
and next here the problem focus assessment means collecting the data about a problem that has already been identified like i said diabetic asthma chronic disease already diagnosed already identified this type of assessment has a narrow scope and short time frame then initial assessment like your patient frequently come to you for a follow-up you already used to with your patient but when a new patient come to you you give them extra time because you are totally new you have to find out the focus assessment means the nurse determined whether the problem still exists and whether the status of problem has changed like improved or bad or worsening deteriorate the problem or problem go away resolve mean mean patient is okay cure it's time came to say goodbye do not need to follow up even this assessment is also include the appraisal of any new overlooked or mid-diagnosed problem. In intensive care unit may perform the focus assessment only few minutes. Like you are working in an emergency unit, casualty unit. So you do not get enough time to take the history because your first accountability saved the patient's life. Next here, emergency assessment, another one. So here we go, I'm going to talk the emergency assessment. So emergency assessment takes the place is life threatening situation in which the uh, preservation of life is the top priorities. So in my any other class, I will explain how to categorize the different kind of emergency and which patient you have to check first. And when you work in the hospital, you can see how to prioritize the patient. We call immediate care or red color or delay care or priority two or yellow color or minimal priority, which is green or expectant, which is called black. So when you work in hospital, you go through, but now we are going to focus about the emergency assessment right and in emergency assessment like patient came for road traffic accident with that we save the patient life fast rather than go for the history maybe even we do not know patient is conscious or unconscious the level of consciousness is important so this said the time is time is of the essence to rapid identification of an intervention for the client health problem. When any casualty patient come to you in emergency department, before take history, you have to find out what the problem your patient and give the management first, right? I want to tell you for NCLEX board, it is called prioritization question. You have a four patient, which patient you will check first? Sometimes students feel, um, uh, feel uh, discomfort because every sign symptom is equal. Which patient I will choose first? When you work in the hospital, you will get your experience. It's fine, but when you go for NCLEX board, you are not working as an RN. How you have to solving this type of problem? Let um, please 
listen me very carefully. Like there are four patient came to you over the phone call or um, in your floor. First of all, apply A, B, C, D law. If you see, no, my patient does not follow A, B, C, D law, then follow Maslow's law or Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? So as I told you, there are four options, four patient, which patient yarrow a obstruction, which patient is a active bleeding, or which patient is a stop is the breathing, go first. If you see no patient has a respiratory problem, every patient respiration is so fine, no breathing problem, no circulatory problem, not active bleeding there. Then go for Maslow law, which is the phys need, physical need first. If I'm completely okay, I will not go to the hospital. Definitely I have some problem because of that I am in hospital. Maybe I have a severe pain. And this is the first priorities. Physical needs is first priorities. Pain management. Every student know what is Maslow's law. And they said the physical need is the first because so it is then important to survive. What I need to survive? Food. But I am not going hospital for the food. When you are okay, I am okay. That is okay. But I said, in if although we are okay, we need what? We need food first. Then we need shelter. We need protection means securities, then we need belongings, right? But I said, this is for healthy person, but I am going to sit for my NCLEX board. They give me some problem, I have to solve it. So when patient come to the hospital, if the respiration is okay, breathing is okay, circulation is okay, vital sun is okay, pulse oximetry is okay, then say why you come to the hospital. Maybe the physical need, what is the need? Maybe patient has severe pain. Nine out of 10, this is the priorities, right? So we have to follow either ABC law or we have to follow the Maslow's law. Let me read it. Often the client difficulties involve the airway, breathing, or circulatory problem. And this is called ABC. A means airway problem. Maybe anything put in my throat and stop it. Breathing problem, right? Maybe less oxygen plus oximetry you have to check or any active bleeding. If you do not stop the active bleeding, patient will go shock. When patient go shock, they will, um, uh, basically, when patient is active bleeding, patient blood pressure go down. When blood pressure go down, patient will develop hypovolemic shock and shock lead to the cardiac failure or patient will die, right? So I said this ABC law, we will try to apply first, then abrupt change in the self-concept if is suicidal thought in case of psychiatry patient or role or relationship can also initiate an emergency. Emergency assessment focus on few essential health patterns and is, it is not comprehensive care. So now go here, another one. It's called the time-lapse reassessment. 
other type of assessment take a place after the initial assessment to evaluate any change in the client client functional health or nurse perform the time left reassess when substantial period of time have um, between the assessment means periodic output patient um, a clinic visit i mean follow up or home health visit or health and developmental uh, scanning right this is called time left reassessment support um, patient when go back when they come second time it's called follow up visit so during the follow up visit you can take the history again or sometime the RN can go to the home visit. They can assess the patient. And also, we can go tell the patient at least two eyes a year for all basic laboratory tests, health and developmental scanning, like blood sugar, chest x ray, urine RE, right? Or complete blood test called CBC is very basic. And what are the next steps of health assessment? Collecting data. And there are two type of uh, data. Everybody know that, but still I want to explain a little bit. One is subjective data collection and objective data collection so subjective data means the symptom experienced by the client this is called subjective data example if patient said i have a, a throat pain right so you do not know how to measure the throat pain if patient say i have a abdominal pain so this is subjective data because this symptom experienced by the patient yeah this is called objective data means the observation who whose observe your observation or measurable like blood pressure like respiratory rate like pulse rate like temperature, so vital sign are objective data, right? Sometimes we collect the data from the chart, and it is right. So, and also after the collecting the data, we have confirmed data collection, and we have to figure it out is it true or wrong and it's called validation of data and finally organization of data right recording and keep the documenting of the data as well so communication the information also received in the assessment what next gathering of the information about the client this is called collecting data, include physical, psychological, emotion, socio-cultural, spiritual, spiritual factor that may affect the client health status. Include the physical. So physical, like a patient is obese, obesity can cause so many diseases, like atherosclerosis, stroke, heart problem, diabetic. So can see the patient, you can get some idea. Oh, my patient is too obese. If your patient is too thin, you can see the patient may be under nutrition, malnourished. This is also bad, right? So you see, when you are, when you have the license, when you have a experience, you can, to see the patient, you can understand so many health information. 
psychological. So way of talking, their body language, their behavior, you can understand, is there any problem with the, this guy? Emotion, right? It is also reflects their appearance. Sociocultural. But my friend, it is very important. We are RN. So always we will be fair to, we will be equal to every patient. We do not think who came from rich and who came from the poor society. But unfortunately, we are getting bias who have money. But always be fair for the profession, be kind to the peoples, right? It is very important because it is our profession. We have to love our patient. There is, if the patient came from low socioeconomical culture, some of the disease is more common because the person who came the poor um, society, they living in the overcrowded area. The infection is more common to spread to others, like scabies, like tuberculosis. So to evaluate the, their social condition, you can find out what are the disease. Like the rich patient do not do the physical exercise because of the sedentary worker, they have a more chance to develop heart disease. Again, family history. If my father passed away because of heart problem, my uncle passed away because of heart problem, I have a chance to develop heart problem as well. When I give this history to you, you can tell me, please be aware about this. Do not take too much salty food, too much fat, do the physical exercise, check the blood cholesterol level, control your blood sugar and hypertension, right? So it is called prediction. Also the spiritual factor. Maybe I, I trust in God. So it is not your problem, whatever you believe, okay. But even we could respect our patient. Right, whatever my belief, who cares? So some patients feel good if they do the meditation, if they think about their God, especially hospice center, rehab center, the patient who terminally diagnosed terminal disease, give them some peace, painless death. So give them the space what they like. So that may affect the client health status. Next here, include the past medical history, like allergic history, any past surgical history, any chronic disease, also use of folk health method, means herbal medication. Like if your patient has an allergy to penicillin, do not give them amoxicillin or penicillin or um, aminoglyc, uh, I mean, or I mean, what said, septaxone or anything else. So if patient have an allergic to the medication, don't give it to them. If your patient has a like, they said, oh, I am used, I used to take the uh, St. John's what? And to, uh, this week, patient has a date for any major surgical operation. You can tell them, hold this herbal medication. If your patient take any um, herbal, like, uh, I mean, garlic, garlic, then you prescribe the blood thinner, better to tell not to take together, right? So. As a RN, you have a good sense when you're dealing with the patient. Include the current, present problem of the client, like pain, nausea, sleep, 
religious practice, medication and treatment of the client taking now. It should be included in the patient history also present chief complaint. It should be included, I said. Now here, a little bit more explanation about the type of data, what we discussed few minutes ago. Let me read it. When performing an assessment, the nurse gathered objective and subjective data. Subjective data, the symptoms, the symptoms experienced by the client, right? Like subjective data are the verbal statement because patient explained to you or provided by, I mean, provided by the patient and statement about nausea. So my friend, if I have a vomitus, you can see the vomitus, but if I say I have a nausea, you do not understand, you do not feel it. Statement by nausea, about the nausea or description of pain or fatigue are example of subjective data. If I say, I feel malaise, malaise means not to feel good. How you can evaluate it? This is the statement by the patient and is the subjective data. The other one is objective data. I said what we observe or what we measure what we see, what we can listen, what we can feel, or what we can uh, examine. So objective data sign detectable by observer. Who is observer? You, RN, NP, or physician. Observe or can be measured and tested again the accepted standard. They can be seen or they can heard, they can felt, they can smell, or they are obtained by observation or by physical examination. For example, this color of the skin for jaundice or any liver problem or I said most common one is a vital sign, right? Vital sign, but objective data. Observation, interviewing, examination, this is the way of data collection. Observation means to observe is to gather the data by using the sense. Like I am your patient, you are my RN today. You are sitting in the room. I'm coming to you through the door. If I have a problem to the movement, you can say this man has a gait problem, walking problem. So you can see before to come, because you are medic person, you are the person after the God. So you, when patient come, everybody can see, as general, but you are the healthcare provider I. Before take the history, you can say, okay, this man is obese. This man is under nutrition. This man has a gait problem or body language problem. To observe is to gather the data by using the sense and interview means when you interact with your patient interview a yeah, planned communication or con uh, conversation with a purpose. What are the purpose? To find out or to make the diagnosis, right? You will be friend with your patient, not too much, be professional. Otherwise patient will fall in love with you. So don't do this. So interviewing 
But this interview is a planned manner to find out something, to make a diagnosis, right? So now go for examination, perform a physical examination. The physical examination is often guided by data approved, uh, sorry, provided by a, the patient. Or we can check head to two approach, right? So you can start from the head, throat, chest, abdomen, then lower extremities. So all system, but first of all, physical examination, then go for system examination. So it is called head to two approach is frequently used to provide systemic approach that help to avoid or omitting important data, right? Now we are going to discuss the physical assessment and how to examine different head to toe. 